Hello, I'm Valerio Ferroni from the University of Trento, and I will tell you about uh, our fame based toolkit for simulating the performances of LISA UV charge management device. LISA will, will observe gravitational waves, uh, monitoring the strain between a couple of test masses free falling. Test masses are lodged in, uh, in the electrode housing. Uh, that provides shielding from electromagnetic disturbances and provides low noise sensing and control. And this constitutes the GRS, the gravitational reverse sensor of the spacecraft. In space, solar and galactic particles accumulate charge on Tesmas, so Lorentz force would perturb the Tesmas free fall unless the charge of the Tesmas is kept to zero. Elisa. So we use uh, charge, uh, a charge, we need, we need to, uh, to, ch to control the charge of the test masses. We use contact light devices that provides uh, UV light uh, cones, uh, uh, illuminating uh, the surfaces of the sensor and, uh, and uh, producing photoelectric currents. This photoelectric currents uh, uh, provides a change of the test mass potential uh, um, depending on, uh, on, on the illumination geometry. If you illuminate uh, the Tesma surfaces, uh, you produce uh, a positive apparent yield, thus uh, um, a current uh, of electron flowing from the Tesma and bringing the Tesma's potential to positive values. Instead, when you illuminate the electrode housing uh, surfaces, uh, you produce a negative apparent yield, so a negative uh, a current of electron flowing to the test masses and uh, bringing the test mass potential to uh, negative values. So uh, the apparent yield tells you in general how many electrons from the test mass uh, uh, goes from the test mass per injected photons in the GRS. The simul uh, for the for, for uh, simulating the, the, the charge control system in LISA, we propose a toolkit for, for predicting the, the, the performances of this system for various uh, strategies of, of charge control. The discharge system simulation is complex because you need to deal with the UV light and photoelectron distribution, which is determined also by intrinsic properties of the surfaces involved. And then you need to calculate the electric fields and propagate the electrons uh, in these fields and, and, and calculate the currents. The toolkit, uh, in the first place, uh, deals with the photon tracing. We use a, a GM4, the GM4 toolkit for propagating UV light inside the GRS and calculate where the photons are absorbed. This is done uh, depending on the considering the UV properties, in particular the cone aperture of the of the light source and the energy of the uh, of the photons, and also surfa pro surfaces properties such as the roughness and the reflectivity. Then we need to calculate the photoelectron distribution. In the first place, we consider that every point where the photon are absorbed emit an electron. And, and, and depending on the angle of incidence of the, of the absorbed photons, we augment this number of electrons uh, um, for a factor up to 50%. Uh, so in general, the more are, uh, the, the, the more the, uh, the higher the angle of incidence of the electrons uh, absorbed is, and the, the, the more probable uh, more probable is that uh, you eject uh, a photon uh, a photoelectron. For the uh, electrons momentum, we consider experimental model that allows us to calculate the energy and the angular distribution of. Um, of the, angle, uh, the angular distribution, considering the work function of the surfaces and the spectrum of the photons uh, of the light of the light in, uh, of the light. 
Now we need to trace the electrons. Uh, we use the FEM. The FEM in the first place calculate the electric fields in the GRS as a function of the Desmos potential and uh, for uh, any electro uh, any potential applied to the electrode housing. And then uh, trace uh, the path of the electrons inside the GRS. And this allows us to finally count how many electrons leave test masses and how many reach the test masses. To calculate uh, finally the apparent yield of the GRS, we uh, consider a different contribution of um, different contribution. So for any uh, surface emitting um, uh, electrons, so we scale uh, this number for uh, the quantum yield of the surface that tells you how many uh, electrons are actually uh, emitted from that surface per photon absorbed. And then we sum the contribution for all the surfaces and scale that, uh, normalize that for the power of the, of, the, of the UV source. We consider, we group the contribution in three main categories. The first one is the test masses that provides a positive apparent yield, so uh, uh, electrons flowing from the test mass. And then we consider electrode housing contribution that provides negative uh, apparent yield, so uh, the contribution of the, the, the current that flows, uh, the current of uh, electron that flows to the test masses. And then we group apart uh, the gap uh, contribution, which is uh, uh, which uh, the gap contribution uh, is is uh, considering all the electrons emitted from uh, side of the electrodes, the guard rings, uh, and the holes uh, in the GRS. This 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 part of uh, this electron in general were neglected because uh, uh, to uh, trace their path, uh, you need to calculate. Uh, you need to know the um, the electric fields in their uh, in, the, in that narrow area. And um, so in general, that contribution was neglected, uh, but because in, for some illumination cases, uh, for example, when you emulate electrode housing, a lot of lights and up there, uh, it's important to assess this contribution. And you see with the FEM model, uh, you, you see that the contribution of, uh, of the gap electron, which is the red one in the figure, is very important. It gets bigger and bigger with the Tesmos potential, uh, with the Tesmos potential. And uh, this is uh, uh, very relevant uh, to uh, simulate uh, a real system. So we uh, finally validate uh, our uh, toolkit uh, considering uh, uh, data from uh, a lisa like experimental setup uh, um, uh, in Trento, where we have a torsion pendulum, uh, torsion pendulum facility with the um, uh, representative uh, GRS of the LISA. Uh, we consider uh, different illumination strategies uh, among which we use, we consider a, a pulsed light illumination at different phases uh, with the injection at under kilohertz injection voltages. And then we consider this illumination. So illumi illumi we illuminate for an entire number of uh, cycles of the injection uh, voltages. And uh, we, for different uh, um, um, voltages applied on the Z electrode, which are the electrodes close to the illumination area. And to model uh, uh, the experimental setup, uh, we need to consider uh, the surface properties, the UV source. And uh, as initial setting, uh, uh, we take uh, the UV cone and surface reflected work function from representative measurements. And then we finally uh, fit uh, uh, lab data for the quantum yield of the test mass recorded in surface. And we got these results. In the figure on the right, you see the dotted um, with the error bars are the lab data and the continuous lines are the simulated data fitted to them. The blue dot, uh, represent the pulse of the light illumination, whereas uh, the, the black and the green one uh, represent the, the DC illumination. You see that uh, we, have, uh, we are able to uh, accurately uh, reproduce uh, uh, the experimental data with only small discrepancies. 
Uh, so basically with a uniform quantum yield of work function on all the surfaces uh, with just a uh, few uh, less than, than 10 percent of imbalances we have a, a, a very good reproduction of data and this is uh, this is consistent with the realistic picture of uh, of our uh, our elixir picture of our sensor because uh, all the surfaces are almost almost all the surfaces are gold coded so the, we are already dealing with one material and so finally uh, this toolkit uh, with uh, just one model uh, is able to predict uh, different research scenario and will be a valuable uh, tool uh, for predicting the performances of uh, lisa discharge uh, in flight and uh, test on ground uh, our uh, discharge uh, strategies. Thanks a lot.